A lot of talk about that big yellow blob in the Gulf of Mexico could develop into something, likely won't. We're going to set the record straight from what is out there on social media, break it down with some meteorology and science. There is something, though, that I'm a little more concerned about in the long-term future. We're going to take a look at that closer to the end of the video, so stick around for that. If you love staying up to date with the weather or love talking meteorology and science, you've come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button, and we are going to get right into it and join this growing weather community. Thank you for being a part of it. All right, so here we go. This is the area. We're still kind of waiting for it to develop. I don't really think it's going to. That color has gone down. It was at that 50 to 60% marker, that medium shot from the Hurricane Center. It's now about 30%. Here's the deal. There is this little cluster of thunderstorms right here, and there's another little cluster of thunderstorms right here. We also have this storm in the Pacific that is going to push its way towards the southwest gulf into the Bay of Campeche region. The deal when you have these disturbances that are hanging out close in proximity it's really, really hard for one of them to become dominant, and more than likely, we're just going to see a disorganized mess heading towards the state of Florida. I think the track is down pat. This is coming to Florida. The strength, though, is in question. It shouldn't be anything too, too strong. However, we are going to be watching for a flood threat. That's really going to be the main concern with this as we move into the next week, especially if you're watching from South Florida. Here's kind of the illustration of the different competing centers. So this is the GFS and uh, GFS low level spin, vorticity as we call it, and the, uh, the surface wind speed here. Those are the white arrows that you see on the screen kind of spinning around. Here we go with one of our disturbances. There's our trough right there hanging around Cancun or north of the Yucatan. We also have an area of low-level spin in the Bay of Campeche. And then we also have this strung out vorticity here. There's a weak cold front that's going to be hanging around uh, the deep south, the northern Gulf Coast. That's also going to try to influence uh, the development of this area. And it would be a negative influence on the storm itself. Again, positive for us. Taking this out to Sunday. So we are in the weekend now, the back half of the weekend. And here is the deal. We have this little elongated low-level center. We have that as well. And that's still in this very broad area of spin. It's going to be really, really difficult for anything to get going. Some of these stronger model runs that you see out there that are shared on social media, without context, by the way, have one lone lobe of low pressure right here and then it being by itself and then becoming dominant by itself in the Western Gulf and then kind of working its way in that area. If you were to see the stronger solutions come into fruition, there's going to have to only be one area of spin, one disturbance coming out of the Bay of Campeche and then working its way to the Florida Peninsula. That's where this disturbance is going. The question is how strong it is. I don't think it's going to get that strong, just long short story short, because I do think some of the models are missing on that disturbance that's going to be right here. This is the GFS. I think it has it correctly identified. And then we see this go forward. It tries to tighten up a little bit, but notice we have it there, and it's still encapsulated in that longer or more strung out like a string bean area of low pressure there. And then you see another area right there. So the most likely scenario here is a long drawn out system that kind of sends a few pieces along this moisture train if you will into south central florida i think the heaviest rain at this point looks to fall uh south of orlando this would kind of describe it a better or illustrate it a little bit better this is going to be the atmospheric moisture so the darker the reds and purples the more moisture we have in the atmosphere here by sunday is that hodgepodge of disturbances, if you will, that's just kind of hanging out in the eastern Gulf. It does push into South Florida, south of Orlando. This is straight up tropical moisture, so we are going to have to watch for the potential for some flooding. I'll show you that in just one second. But nonetheless, um, I don't think we're going to be talking about a high-end wind event or something that can get real big and strong in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. I want to take you to the other weather computer now, and I want to show you some models uh, via tropical tidbits. The icon has been all this the entire way. I've talked a lot at length this hurricane season that the icon, in my opinion, has been performing at one of the best, uh, the best models so far this hurricane season. The European, it's been trashed this year, so we're gonna uh, talk about more about that in a second. But here we go. 
Um, the icon does have something. I mean, 1,000 millibars, that's a pretty weak low. Maybe a tropical storm, maybe. But the deal here is, as it's kind of working towards South Florida, notice how it really keeps it elongated. There's our low, but it's kind of like egg-shaped. Some of the stronger ones that you see, the stronger storms that you see out there, you have those really concentric isobars and really tight isobars there. We're not seeing it with the icon. Uh, it once kind of showed it, but it has also been trending weaker. Um, the Canadian has a, kind of, has a kind of a weird solution. It has it kind of pinwheeling around, and this is all the way out to now October 12th, and that's what I'm talking about. That's a stronger system. Pay no attention to this one. It's doing some weird things with it, and uh, I don't think that that solution is going to happen either. There is something by the middle of October, though, that has piqued our interest. We're going to take a look at that again toward the end of the video. The Euro AI has also been very, very good. It did fantastic with Helene, um, and it's done well. Essentially, what the Euro AI is doing, it's looking at the what the data that's being put into it and then kind of coming up with looking at like solutions and like scenarios uh, from past weather patterns. And it's suggesting that we could have a weak tropical storm moving into South Florida. It looks very, very similar to the icon. So I think the intensity with this is capped. Again, long story short, it could become a depression. It could get a dame. I would favor right now a weak strung out system that's not gonna have a name, but could bring a flood threat to South Florida as a result. All right, so I want to go to our uh, back to our other weather computer, and I'm going to show you. This is we're going to take it out through the middle and latter stages of next week. This is going to be through Thursday. This is going to be the European rendition of uh, the rainfall amounts. We're going to bring out the trusty dabber, and you see here again, we're getting the darker reds and yellows. That's where we're going to have to look for some flooding. I know it might not seem that four, five, six inches is a lot of rain. Typically in these events. The global model like this is going to underdo it, so we could end up closing in on 10 inches. Some of the higher resolution models are doing that. We still are trying to estimate and forecast where the highest corridor or the highest potential of that rainfall is going to be, and it's likely probably going to be right in here, maybe extending down into Miami, into the Keys as well. I think the general rule as we get into next week is to really watch uh, south of Orlando, maybe Tampa South, um, for that flood threat, we have some drier air coming into North Florida, and that should help to squash everything towards South Florida. So that is really what we are going to watch. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, Hurricane Kirk now. This is no threat to land. This thing is impressive, though. It has rapidly intensified last night from a Cat 1 to a Cat 3. It remains a Cat 3, but uh, a very powerful hurricane, which we will see some bigger waves and some higher rip currents on the east, east coast of the U.S., getting into your weekend, so be careful if your plans take you to the beach. Nonetheless, this is not going to have any direct impacts. It is expected to strengthen further to a 140 mile per hour Category 4 storm. The environment is near pristine for this thing. Uh, the water is still very, very warm, pretty much untapped water out ahead of this thing, and it's going to use that to strengthen and be a very, very strong hurricane. Thankfully, again, this one is going to stay out to sea. All right, so I mentioned at the earlier stages of the video that I'm a little more concerned with something toward the end or towards the middle of October. For, for that, we're going to look at the ensembles. Climate Prediction Center has this area highlighted in the Central Caribbean as well. We're going to go to the GFS ensembles, and I really want to turn your attention to this area. Central Caribbean, that is right smack dab in the climatological area where we're going to look anyway for uh, the potential tropical development. But all these bright colors here, that's our little thing that we're talking about towards the, towards the weekend. 10th, 11th, 12th frame, time frame as well. And then we start to get, notice this cluster down here. This is now going to be October 16th, October 17th. Right on in through here, several members uh, over the last several days of the ensembles have been hinting at that we're going to have something try to get going here, borne by some thunderstorms off of South America that push out into the Central Caribbean and then try to work their way northward. And there's that stronger signal right there, 
Let me delete my Telestration and bring it back up. So potential for something to move over the Yucatan or maybe get drawn up in that direction. Way, way too early to tell. You see, though, that we have a, at least according to the GFS ensembles, we have a big area of high pressure that'll try to keep it from really going to that direction or something like that. Um, it might have a tendency to kind of push it further uh, depending upon how that how strong that area of high pressure is, it might try to push it further to the west. So, I mean, again, as we get towards the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th into that time frame, that is where we're going to be watching for maybe something to be born south of Jamaica and then lift north or northwest back into the Gulf of Mexico again. That's going to be something different from this little weak, strung out like a string bean thing that we are seeing in the Gulf of Mexico trying to get its act together. Alrighty, guys, if you found this video helpful, if you want to join the best weather community, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Post that in the comments. Post where you're tuning in from as well. And uh, hit that subscribe button if you found this helpful and if you want to be a part of the best weather community on YouTube. We'll catch you soon. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button. Thank you to all the new subscribers that have found us over the last couple of days. Appreciate you guys.